Welcome back to a Lightroom series so good even Christopher Nolan watches. Now Lightroom is such an expansive software, it's full of hidden tips and tricks that even professionals don't know, but definitely should. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over my top 10 hidden tips and tricks and secret shortcuts that you should definitely know when using Lightroom. And I'm going to start right now. So before I go ahead and share my very first tip, I'd recommend updating your Lightroom first. I'm going to be using Lightroom Classic version 14.4. Now the reason I say this is some tools are either brand new or that have moved with inside Lightroom. So you can follow along without scratching your head of working out where that tool's disappeared to. I'd recommend updating Lightroom first. So my first tool I'm going to be talking about is the brand new Remove Distractions tool. Now it uses Generative Remove, but it automatically selects subjects, dramatically speeding up your editing workflow. It's a tool that I've recently talked about, but actually it's a really handy tool to have in your editing workflow. So to find it, all you'll need to do is go over to your Remove tool, and then underneath your Remove tool, you'll see Remove Distractions, and you will have two options. You'll have Reflections, and people. Now this is the photo I'm going to be using. As you can see, there's lots of people in the background and I want them to be disappeared to really focus on St. Paul's in the background. So all I'll need to do is go ahead and select people and let Lightroom do its thing. 12 seconds later. And as you can see, Lightroom has selected all the people in the background without having me to select anything. So then all you'll need to do is go ahead and click remove. Then Lightroom Classic will use generative remove, work out what shouldn't be there and remove it from there. So actually it's a really quick process. It now automatically selects and as you can see, automatically removes people from your background. And this is a super useful tool. Okay, so my second hidden tool is called Filter Via Metadata. And this is a very useful tool if you're a, a concert photographer, a wedding photographer, a wildlife photographer, basically anyone that shoots on more than one camera or more than one lens on a photo shoot. What it allows you to do is filter via a camera brand, uh, even time of year, it's a very helpful feature. So take this wedding that I very recently photographed. To actually filter via metadata, go right at the top in your library panel and you'll see you've got a few buttons. Go ahead and click on the one that says metadata. When you click on that, you'll see you'll be able to subcategorize via date, camera, lens, and label. And it's really useful. The ones that I predominantly use are camera and lens. So for example, you can see that I used my A7 III to photograph this wedding, but you can also see I can sub-filter that from all of the photos taken on the 24 to 70, all the photos taken on the Tamron 70 to 180, as well as the 50 mil and the Samyang 85 mil. Now I find this very useful as a YouTuber because obviously I do a lot of lens reviews. So I can actually work out what I photographed on what camera and what lens, simply by using the metadata. And you also might find it helpful as well. Maybe you're a wedding photographer and you want to know what photo you took on camera A versus camera B. We will be able to do this with inside the metadata. And it's something that I've used a lot of this year simply since I discovered it. And this is a very useful tool if you shoot on more than one camera body or more than one lens. Now my next hidden tip is actually a shortcut and it's a really useful shortcut for culling your images, which arguably is the most boring part of my editing process, working out what images I want to keep and what images I want to remove. And all you'll need to do for this is go ahead and click caps lock on your keyboard. Now what this will do is it will activate a hidden mode with inside Lightroom. So when you go ahead and cull your images, I often use the label, so uh, six, seven, eight, and nine are the colored labels you've got inside Lightroom. But of course you also can use rating from zero to five stars. When you click on it, it will automatically move to your next photo. So let's say I want to go ahead and edit this photo. Well, I'll go ahead and click eight. As you can see, I've labeled that green. It automatically skips to the next image. So it actually cuts down on your culling process. And so instead of pressing a button, then moving to the next image, it kind of automatically moves to your next photo. Very useful. So for example, I want to edit this photo as well. Click eight, moves to the next image. Maybe I don't want to edit this photo. Well, I'll go ahead and click zero moves to the next image. It hopefully will speed up your culling process, which is definitely the most boring part of being a photographer. 
So my next three tips are all about cropping. Now cropping is a really important part, making sure you've got the right composition. And sometimes the distractions around your Lightroom can be a little bit annoying, working out if you've got the right horizon or the right crop or even orientation. So a hidden trick that I've recently found with inside it, and I found this out by accident, if you go over to my crop tool, if you go ahead and click L on your keyboard, what it will do is it will dim all of the settings around your Lightroom, mainly focusing on your photo. And then if you click L again, it turns your entire screen to black apart from the photo. So now you can really focus on the exact crop that you want. So for example, I might crop in like so. And once you're happy, go ahead and click return, then simply click L again and all of your settings have appeared again. So this is a really helpful tool, but it's not just for the actual crop tool. You can use it anywhere with inside Lightroom. So for example, let's say I wanna to move to this image and I just wanna know what this image looks like without any distractions. Go ahead and click L twice. You can really focusing on the image, making sure that you're happy with the colors without any of those really annoying distractions around Lightroom. And then when you wanna revert back, click L again, and all the settings have appeared. This is a really useful shortcut I find in the crop tool, as well as I'm when I'm checking my color grade before and after. Now also in the crop tool is your crop overlays, and you can actually cycle through. Lightroom have got a whole bunch that you can use. So for example, if we go ahead and open up our crop tool, you can see this is your crop overlay. Currently, I'm using the rule of thirds, but you can cycle through them. And all you'll need to do is go ahead and click O on your keyboard. When you do that, you can see you've got a whole bunch to cycle through. So for example, you've got these diamond one, you've got a tight rule of thirds, you've got the golden ratio, you've got some ones that show you different aspects if you want to crop in further. So for example, five by seven crop or four by five crop, as well as you've got this really tight grid, which is very useful if you're actually photographing to make sure you've got the right horizons. But me personally, I just like the simple rule of thirds. And of course you can change them at any point. All you need to do is go ahead and click O on your keyboard when you've got the crop tool activated. And my last one found with inside the crop tool is allows you to quickly change your orientation from portrait to landscape. Now for this, all you'll need to do is have your crop tool open. Now, if you wanted to change this photo, for example, to portrait, it's kind of a bit of a fiddle if you're not using any of your keyboard keys. For example, you've got to kind of force it, there we go, into your portrait orientation. It's a little bit fiddly. But instead, all you need to do is go ahead and click X on your keyboard. And as you can see, you can cycle from landscape, portrait, landscape, portrait, really, really quickly. So if you are someone that likes shooting portrait and landscape, and you find it very fiddly changing between the two, X on your keyboard is a very handy shortcut to remember. Now my next tool is all about masking. Now there's lots of useful masks inside Lightroom. In fact, I've actually made a dedicated video on all of the Lightroom masks. You can go ahead and watch it here. But actually this one's about one mask in particular, the brush mask. Now it's a very underutilized mask, mostly because of how fiddly and cumbersome it is. If you're someone that uses a laptop and maybe use a mouse or a trackpad, the brush tool is very fiddly, very cumbersome, just not very useful. But actually there's a hidden trick inside it due to a Lightroom shortcut. So let's go ahead and open up my masking panel. Let's say I want to create a more of a perspective mask. So I really wanna make the kind of, these lights glow in my photo. Well there's not really a mask that can do that. So we're gonna to have to use the brush tool. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and create a new mask and drop down to the brush. Now you've got a different size brush so you can choose, but if you go ahead and hold down shift, you can create perfect straight lines. So for example, if I go ahead and click, hold down shift and click again, you can see we've got a perfect straight line. But not only that, you can also change the size of your brush and go from a small brush to a large brush. So for example, if I go ahead and create a really small brush, click, hold down shift, make a really large brush, and then hold down shift again, you can see it gets slightly larger. Now this is very useful if you wanna create a bit more of a perspective look with inside your photo. So what I'm gonna do is quickly just remove those brushes that I've made, because we're not be using those for this image. Create new mask, brush tool, go ahead and start at very, very large on the left-hand side of my photo, click, go all the way to the center of my image, making the brush a little bit smaller, hold down shift, click again, you can see we've made this really cool perspective look. And then I can do exactly the same for the right hand side, click again. As you can see, we've now gone from big to small to big again, perfect straight lines, creating the exact effect that this photo needed. So now all I need to do is go ahead and bring up the exposure. I might decrease the temperature. I might increase the saturation. And mostly I'm gonna go ahead to my dehaze. I'm gonna drop that down. 
and might also lower the clarity as well. So we've made the exact effect we're after by three button presses. So actually the brush tool's a lot more useful than you might think, thanks to the shift shortcut on your keyboard. Now, a really useful tool inside Lightroom is your enhance tool, and it allows you to increase the resolution or denoise your image. But actually, it's had a recent upgrade, and now it no longer creates a separate DNG, so it's non-destructive. And I've actually moved it with inside Lightroom. So for example, if we take this image here, let's say I wanna increase the resolution of this photo. Well, traditionally, you'd right click, go down to where you can see it says enhance, and it will open up this dialog box but you don't need to do that anymore. What you'll need to do is head over to the details panel inside your develop panel. Go ahead and open up that. You can see right at the top, you've got denoise, raw details, and super resolution. And it's no longer destructive, it's non-destructive. So it doesn't create a separate file when you use it. So now all you need to do is go ahead and click super resolution, allow Lightroom to look at the image and actually increase the resolution using AI and it works so much easier. So now if I go ahead and zoom in, you can see we've got a lot more detail to this photo. So yeah, don't have to go right click and select enhance. You now can find it inside your details panel and it's now non-destructive. Now my next hidden shortcut is actually the most useful shortcut I think in Lightroom. And I use it every single time I create a tutorial as well as every single time I color grade a new photo. And that is the before and after shortcut. Now if you want to do this inside Lightroom, you'd have to go down to click the reset button and then click undo. But actually, instead of doing any of that, all you need to do is go ahead and click backslash on your keyboard and it will show you the before and after really quickly. And there's not much to it. It's just a very, very, very useful shortcut to know, especially if you wanna look at where you started from and your endpoint. And I use it on all my tutorials to show you guys what the before is and what the after is. A very useful shortcut. And last, but definitely not least, is hidden photo profiles. Now inside Lightroom, there are a whole bunch of hidden color profiles that you can use without even editing. And they're called photo profiles. Now to find them, all you need to do is go up to your basics panel and you can see you've got profile at the top. And at the moment, we're in Adobe Color. Now if you click, you've got around five or six to choose from here. You've got landscape, portrait, standard, vivid, and you've got some black and white ones. But did you know there's about a hundred more hidden with inside Lightroom? All you'll need to do is click on the four little squares on the right hand side of profiles. If you go ahead and click on that, you can see it opens up your profile browser. Now inside here, you've got a whole bunch of favorites, which are the ones that you can see already. But if you drop down, you've got a whole bunch of Adobe Raw ones, as well as you've got some adaptive ones, artistic ones, 17 black and white ones, modern ones, and you've got some vintage ones. And if you want to save them, as in have them as your favorites, all you need to do is click on one, let's say we like vintage one, for example, and go ahead and click your little star icon. Once you've done that, it will always be saved inside your favorites. Now there's so many to look through, so what I recommend doing is jumping onto Lightroom and looking through yourself, finding ones that you do like, finding ones that you don't like, and then favoriting the ones that you actually are going to use. But yeah, there is a lot of profiles in there. Plus, you can now actually have an amount slider to it. So right at the top, you've got an amount slider here. You can increase it and decrease it accordingly. So if you do really like an effect and you want to apply even more or you're finding the effects a little bit too strong, you can now control that with the amount slider. The profiles is a majorly underutilized tool and a tool I highly recommend using. And then once you're happy, go ahead and click close and it takes you back to your standard basics panel. So yeah, remember the hundreds of hidden color profiles inside Lightroom that actually might be useful for your photo editing. And there we go, there are my top 10 hidden tips, tricks and shortcuts that you should definitely remember the next time you edit your photos in Lightroom. Thank you to all of my YouTube members that are currently supporting the channel. If you guys wanna support the channel and get some awesome perks, including free Lightroom presets like the ones that you can see on screen, make sure to go ahead to the link in the description. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next week.